Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Today's video is to explain what is involved in unlooping your electricity supply. Now, if like me, you'd, you'd never even heard the term before, what it is, is that, first of all, the story is that I bought an electric vehicle, my very first electric car, the MG ZS EV, in February 2020, earlier this year, six months ago. And to have a home charge point fitted, which is always advisable because it charges twice as quick as what you call the granny charger that you get with the car, you need to have an installer come and fit it. You get a government grant. It is now reduced. I can't remember how much I got, but since I've had this fitted, it's reduced a bit. But there's a government grant towards having it fitted. And when you pick an installer, a charge point installer to come and do it, they will ask you to send them some photographs and a video of your meter cupboard, or mine did anyway, and, and the, the general layout and the, the proposed route that you want the cable going and, and stuff like that. So I picked one, I'll show you the one I picked uh, shortly, and they emailed me back after I sent them the video and the pictures telling me that I was on a looped supply. And like I said, I'd never even heard of a looped supply. So that's the purpose of this video, to explain what one is and uh, how you go about getting unlooped and what it entails for you and your next door neighbour in regards of digging up uh, the road and stuff like that. So I'll be showing you all that, the before pictures and the after pictures, um, explaining quickly what unlooping is. And then we'll go through the installation of the charge point and what it uh, what it took in my house anyway. And then if you stay right on to the end of the video, if you're interested in going on um, a tariff like Octopus Agile, which I've just gone on, again, I'll go into that later, you will need smart meters fitted. So that's explained as well um, how to go about doing that and what it entails and pictures of before and after the, the smart meter install so first of all we'll get straight onto it with what it looked like what everything was like before i got unlooped and a short explanation of what it entails so when you apply for your charge point to be installed they ask you to send them some pictures of um, the house and the, your proposed cable route and stuff and the meter box and that so that's just the outside of the house that's like from the outside of the bedroom that it'll be running under that's the meter box with the electrics and the gas in it in the hallway and that's the old um, inlets now I didn't realize it but they spotted it from this picture you can see there at the bottom, next door's supply. That's the looped supply. Next door's is feeding in from my meter cupboard. Uh, that box on the right with all the uh, circuit breakers in and the, the meter at the top there, they were replaced within the last five years. So that was reasonably up to date. You can see that's, uh, it'll be out of that cupboard along under that bedroom and then just coming out at that that position. There's the car up the drive. You can see that window there. That is the, the bedroom that the cable will be running under from the meter box to the, the charge point position. And they asked to send a video as well. So here's basically just what you just said. But again, that's showing the looped supply. The one on the right is next door's supply coming from my meter box that's the bit that has to be done away with the loop supply so again there's the circuit breaker box uh, you'll see later the hallway is now blue it was red but I've been on a, a decorating binge during lockdown coronavirus lockdown if it's years later you're watching this video this is 2020 so that's the bedroom the cable will be running under under the floorboards i've told them i'll have all that up ready for the uh, the installer you won't have to lift any carpets or furniture and that's the position so until they told me about a looped 
service I didn't have a clue what one was so I went online and I found this site there's loads of sites about looped supplies and explaining what they are and they, but this one explains it quite simply that's showing the mains cable running that runs along under the footpath in my case or down the road or whatever and then a branch coming off it and that's the one that fed my house and then my neighbours was branched into my house running to hers and uh, like I said it won't fit a charge point or they wouldn't in my case I believe some people have had one fitted on loops flat but they wouldn't on mine until it was unlooped so I had to approach the neighbour with all this info and explain it I printed this leaflet off to show her supply to mine existing as it was and she will have a brand new one luckily because it was hers was looped into mine she didn't have to pay anything whatsoever to have her uh, her supply unlooped and she was uh, she was really cool about it so as you see i'm on a looped supply and have to have it unlooped now when they uh, told me what was involved i was dreading actually telling my neighbor luckily she's really nice my neighbor we get along great and she was absolutely cool with it. Once you explain that it's in her own interest to have her own electric supply, she might get an EV in the future. She might have um, shower storage heater fitted, something like that, which are always advisable on a, a separate supply. I believe some, I have heard that some installs will fit a charge point on a loop supply, but uh, mine wouldn't. So uh, that, that's why I went ahead and did it. But I was pleased uh, that she agreed to have it done, no problem. Now, if she'd have had sort of like a, a pattern imprinted concrete on her drive or something like that, that would have been a different story because I don't know how they could dig that up and reinstate it as good as new. But luckily it was uh, block, block paving. So let's uh, see now. It's mainly a series of pictures and some videos of what's involved in the unlooping and uh, the digging up of drives and stuff like that. So here you can see the guys from the DNO, that's your district network operator, your, uh, your supply, your electricity supply company, who come, uh, this is uh, the first stage, this is day one, they've just dug next door's garden up and some of the garden path and the footpath of course and they're just laying the sleeving and, and that ready for the guys who follow on the day after to fit the cable so you can see him shoving the red sort of sleeving down that's not the cable that's just not the cable we run inside of busy day as well this is thursday bin day so the bin truck arrives and uh, they work really hard these guys as you can see with the old reliable mechanical handheld sledgehammer rubber one or whatever didn't use any power tools at all these guys to to dig everything up it was just shovels and spades and they're getting all the stuff ready for like I say for the cable guys who follow on tomorrow and run the actual cable they're just digging stuff up and running the sleeve so this is the hole under the footpath that the guys have uh, dug ready for him to put the cable in that's the main old cable running down under the footpath along the whole street that everybody's house is branched into that's it a bit closer up it looks like sort of like rust that but i'm assuming it's some sort of hessian i think they just used to wrap it in like an old hessian coating uh, nowadays they use a, a red plastic sleeve but uh, that's been in since the 60s and this is the bit under my neighbor's path this is what they had to dig up her block paving there so uh, i was hoping that would go back great but it did as you'll see later and you can see that's her old cable that's the one that's branched into my supply and is running along under my garden and her path to her meter position now this is it after the cable guys have been the guys that dig the road up are one gang and the garden and then the following day the cable guys come along and um, to connect the cables and that's in the road 
because it's a huge sort of unit, much bigger than I was expecting that, clamp round the old, the existing mains cable that runs under, that I've just shown you running under the footpath, and then coming out of the left hand side out of that red putty stuff is the new cable going through the red plastic sleeves that the other guys inserted and that's the new cable for next door and there you see it coming at the bottom of that picture where it goes in the bottom of that unit that's the new cable that you've just seen from the road her new branch feeding solely her house and coming out the top of that unit is her existing cable going to her uh, meter position, the one that was branched into mine originally. And that's it in close up. Like I said, the bottom is the new cable from the road, the top is the old existing one. And that thing on the left hand side is an uh, iron bar, sort of like a metal bar with a black rubber cap on it shoved down the old cable that was branched into mine i don't know why they do that because that old cable is now dead it's disconnected at my uh, at my meter end and it's um it, it's totally dead so why they, they put that rod down with a cap on i don't know but i presume they must have a reason you can see that stub there on the right is the old capped off next door's capped off supply so it's capped off both ends it's just a bit of dead cable under the ground and then this was it for the weekend that was friday that they were done they dug the garden on the dug the holes on the thursday came and did the gut the cables on the friday and then it was weekend of course so that's how it was for the weekend and the the reinstating guys came along on the monday and filled it all in and these are the uh, pictures after they filled it all in so this was monday i think it was monday it's after the weekend that the guys came to reinstate it all and as you can see this is the street done a really good job put a new flagstone down there and that's where it goes under her garden gravel and this is from my front door tracing where the old cable came so it came along there it will go under there it's still under there dead and this is her reinstated block paving the bit without the uh, the moss is the bits they put back and as you can see it did done a really good job in fact my neighbor said it's better than it was before they started and as you can see you'd never know they dug it all up so as you saw there for me it went really really smoothly the time scale was great. I only got the car 1st of February. As soon as I knew I was getting it, I, I started the ball in motion about having um, a charge point fitted. So I think it was about January I, I started to organise all that. And my uh, district network uh, operator, uh, Electric North, Electrical Northwest or whatever they call here, um, were really, really good. They returned emails great. They came bang on their appointed date, carried out the work efficiently. As you saw, they did a brilliant job reinstating uh, the footpath and particularly the next door neighbours um, drive. And uh, it, it went fantastic. So once you've got your supply unlooped, then you have to have your charge point fitted. So let's go quickly into some videos and some pictures explaining what's involved there. So this is the company I picked to install the uh, the charger, API, based in uh, Manchester. Somebody recommended it, I can't remember, in one of the uh, the Facebook groups. Uh, tried a couple others uh, as well before, but they didn't do the Omi charger. I suppose I could have bought the Omi charger myself and just got somebody to install it, but, but these, as you'll see, do do it as part of their range. So... Uh, you can see it there, the Omi Charger, 495. The Zappi, which is even more highly featured and great if you've got solar panels, that's 794. And that one there, Anderson, it looks very nice, but 1045 seems a bit steep. But uh, I'm very, very happy with the Omi, and I would, uh, I would definitely recommend one. 
So that cupboard there behind the steps is the back of the meter cupboard, which you'll be seeing shortly. And the cable will run under that floor, under where that radio is. Uh, the room's not, not normally like that. I had decided to decorate anyway during lockdown. It was due a decoration. It turned into a major building job, as you can see, with the new radiator, a new vent there, two new plug sockets and all sorts. So... Again, that's the floor that the cable will be running under, paralleling that window and uh, directly behind that, that wall facing you is where the charge point will be going. So I'll show you the finished room in a, in a bit. That's the cable from the charge point to the box after he's installed it. Um, it's a tight fit there. He did mismeasure and try and for ages trying to drill into that wall. I was watching him do it, but uh, he got it right in the end. So that's that. So this is the finished bedroom. They're looking a bit better, and uh, just need some extra lace curtains. I didn't order enough. It's too short. But just behind there is where that box was from. The meter covered along under there. And directly behind that wall so is, is where the new box is going. So yeah, look at it slightly better now. Here's the hallway, another room I've decorated. I've done most of the house during lockdown. And uh, it's now blue instead of red. And this is the meter cupboard. As you can see, the gas and the electric meter cupboard combined. That stub there on the right is what I showed you earlier on the the remains of the supply to next door that's uh, it was connected here so it's now capped off there and under her drive so it's just a bit of dead inert cable lying under her drive and this is all the this was put in by the electricity suppliers when they first they first came and this bit that proteus thing there on the left that's that was put in by the charger installer charge point installers uh, as you can see, it's a 40 amp isolation switch and uh, ELCB or whatever, safety cutout switch, trip switch. So again, um, once I'd had it unlooped and I told the charge point installers, things progressed very, very quickly. All, all of this was done before lockdown started in earnest. Um, we were digging up the drive on the 12th of March. The whole lot was completed before the end of, we were sort of just getting into lockdown then and so I was lucky to get it all done as I did so as you saw the even the the charge point installation went okay as well so we'll finish off now with some more pictures and videos on the installation of the smart meters I decided to go on a tariff called octopus agile now, I won't go into that in great detail here. There's loads of videos and, and sites about that. But basically, it's only quite expensive between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. Other than that, the other 21 hours, it varies every half hour. Um, it's usually, since I've, I've only been on it a couple of weeks, since I've been on it, it's averaging at sort of like 6 or 7 p. It has gone down to below 3 and it has gone down to below 2. For a, a, a couple of hours periods and the good thing is i can set me omi charger to take advantage of this and charge when it just drops below a certain price so i can keep topping the car up when it's really really cheap and the low mileage i do it works out fantastic i'm also a night owl i stay up late watching uh, videos and stuff and films in the, uh, in the cinema room and i've got a projector in there 4k projector which uses quite a lot of power so it's ideal for me because most of my electricity uses is usage is during the day so if i can offset uh, big electric usage like ovens and kettles to a certain extent that away from the four to seven period i'm quids in and it's working out so far great Everybody's circumstances are different. If that's your main energy usage between four and seven, and you don't use much anywhere else, you may be better off on another tariff. But if you are, you will need smart meters fitted. So again, I only went on Agile at the end of May, and by the middle of July, I had all the smart meters fitted. 
and the job is now complete. So let's look at the smart meter installation and the final installation of the uh, OMI on the wall right now. And here's all the new smart meter equipment. I don't know what each bit does. Then to the uh, smart meter installer had to relocate. As you can see, everything's a squeeze getting it, uh, getting it in here. So you yeah, have to do all that. That's who installed all the smart stuff, SMS. That's the in-home display. I'll show you that later on. It's of not of much use, actually, uh, on Agile Tariff. That's the main fuse box or consumer unit or whatever for the house that I fit, I'd fitted about three or, three or four years ago, maybe. This is a new smart meter. Now, I was a gas engineer all my life. I did uh, my apprenticeship with British Gas from 75. I was with them 22 years and 20 years on my own. And it surprises me that he still used the existing outlet flex, the steel outlet flex. When I was fitting meters and I fitted uh, more than one or two, we had to renew the outlet in uh, solid copper. But that's how I did it with the new washers. And... Uh, Obviously, it's it's allowed that way now. This is the cable I ran to an outside double socket, following the course of the uh, the charge point. I'll show you that shortly. That's adjacent to this charge point. Fed badge to plug in uh, safety cutout switch. Overkill, really. I used a really hefty wire, but uh, it's only ever used for a lawnmower, so. Uh, no real need of that gauge of wire. Now this is a, uh, a fireproof corrugated board that the installer said had to go in now regulation wise when a meter's fitted adjacent to uh, electric stuff. So uh, how effective that would be at stopping a, a raging gas main fire is debatable in my mind, but there you go. And this next bit is just a, a half screwed in screw left by the installer of the charge point. So this is the uh, in-home display. Uh, like I say, it's actually uh, pretty uh, pointless when you're on Agile Tariff because it, it can't tie into the Agile Tariff, but it'll still give you your power consumption in watts of your electric. Uh, the gas part of it, I haven't got to uh, to work yet, so I don't know about that, but uh, I don't think it's something I'll be using that often. There are better ones that will link in with Agile. So this is the final uh, install, final video of of everything in place. All ready to charge the MG. Looking over to next doors there. So that's the Omi charger. So that's the bedroom the cable ran under. Well, that's its uh, position on the wall. Great charger. Uh, this is the earthing rod. Uh, he had real trouble getting, <laughs> ramming that down. Drilled through the concrete, and by the way, that crack was already in. It's been in the concrete years, that. Drilled through, and then w when it comes to the hammering bit, he was hammering it in with a claw hammer, a small claw hammer, instead of a two-pound or a four-pound lump hammer. That's what I'd have used. But never mind. Job's done. And, like I said, that's the Omi charger. Really great charger tons of info on that screen it's very small but if you're wondering what all the symbols mean that's uh well, that's the meaning behind each one so it's very small to read but uh, there's tons of information on there should should you need it i don't tend to look at each use the app really that's the holster for the uh the plug-in bit It'd be better if that was like sideways 90 degrees it wouldn't take up so much room sticking into the drive and this is the weatherproof housing i put in i got that from screw fix with the double sockets there that's that cable i showed you that's into a safety cut out uh, alcb in the meter cupboard and we use that for the lawnmower and the pressure washer when washing the car so there you have it uh, i hope this video has been of some use if you do have to have your electric supply unlooped um, all I can say is don't worry and don't be alarmed as much as I was to begin with. Uh, if you've got nasty neighbours, that'll be a different kettle of fish, I would think. But and I wish you luck with that. But as you see, if it's, I hope you do have an experience like me because it all went as smooth as silk. 
and we've each got our own electric supply now and uh, hopefully there's no looking back so far this is my first ev like i say and so far i'm absolutely loving it so again hope it's been of some use i'll catch you for another review or another tip video very very soon thanks for watching bye for now